welcome back to our 1902 Farmhouse Renovation Chapter 4. Today we'll be discussing the living room renovation. You know this room was just one of the saddest rooms that we had in the downstairs portion of the home. Here's looking through from the dining room. This was on a day that my son had come over and we decided to rip up all of the old gold shag carpet from the 1970s that had been brought down and placed into this home. We had old drapes and this old carpet and it was full of dirt and oh it was just it was just terrible. It was so heavy it was so hard to drag out. This is the sunroom and you can see we have a lot of water damage on the walls. All of the windows were rotting. You couldn't even see out of some of the windows because the barrier had been broken in between the double pane. It was so nice when we were able to get these windows replaced and we could finally see the view outdoors. What a beautiful spring day. Before we ripped all that carpet out, I can tell you the only one that appreciated all of that shag carpet was Harley, our little dog. He enjoyed laying in the sun. But all of the carpet came out and we had everything down to just the subfloor. You can see the water damage in the walls, but I was so happy to get that carpet out of there. And my son was kind enough to put down some square vinyl tiles for us. And you can see that in the background there I was playing with some paint colors. I wanted to go with some vintage old paint and so I went with this beautiful green color that was common back in the 1920s. I attempted to set up a little coffee niche in the corner and hung up some barrier drapes to keep it warm in the winter time because those windows, those old windows just leaked so much air, cold air blew in all of the time. But here I was able to put up some burlap curtains and we've got the new paint on the walls but oh my goodness, that living room leaked like a sieve. I would use every pan available to soak up all of the water that would come in through that sunroom that you see right there, it had been converted into an interior room from an exterior sunroom. Well, we ripped all of that old siding down and we decided it was time to start tackling this part of the house. And so all of the old siding came down, all of the old nasty wood that was rotten, and we decided to get rid of those windows. And here, my son Justin was here to help us and we're popping all of the windows out. I say us like I did any work. You know that the men did all the work and I just supervised. But the old door came out, the old windows came out, and we were determining what to do with this area. And I thought it would be best if we were to just close up where the windows were, insulate that area, and I wanted to put in big French doors instead of the single door that we had had before. So we ripped out the ceiling, we put in all new insulation everywhere throughout the entire areas that we had ripped apart. And here we're getting ready to close up that window. You can see that I have already run out and I bought a French door. Nobody was changing my mind, a French door was going in. So there we've closed off where the old door was and that was an interior door hung up for the exterior. It was rain battered. It was just a mess. And there we finally got that one window closed in. And I wonder what am I gonna do with that wall without a window there. Finally the day came that we pulled all of our hands together and we were able to put in the very heavy, very beautiful French door. Thankful for everybody who was able to come over and help us get that door installed. But it sure does add in a lot of light into that house. And isn't that beautiful? Oh, I can't wait to use that door. Actually, I use it now. This, this footage is a little old. I use it all the time and I love it. So we were able to put some new siding up. It's not the siding that's on the original portion of the house. That's old uh, asbestos siding on the white part of the house. But we just have some siding here that I was able to paint. So we moved back into the inside of the living room and we had no power in this room at all for the time that we had lived here. I think we were here maybe three, 
almost four years without power in that living room. We had to run extension cords. So my husband cut the lower portion of the wall out and we ran all new wiring. We didn't cut the entire wall because we knew how much work it was doing the master bedroom upstairs. So we just went with the lower portion so that we could run all new wiring. And of course there's Honey, she's always the supervisor. She keeps everybody on pace for what they need to do. Now we had this random arch in the living room to the dining room the only arch in the entire home and I know that some of the purists will be upset for taking it out but I just couldn't see where it tied into anything in the home so my son got to work on taking out that archway and we just opened it up a little bit wider so we had a larger pass through to what is the dining room but now it's our kitchen and I will do an update video on that coming up further in the series but taking that archway out that was quite a bit of work now we did have a ceiling fan that was the one bit of electricity that worked was the light switch but I didn't want a ceiling fan anymore we needed better lighting so my husband got the old hammer out and he started ripping into the ceiling so that we could run some wiring for some can lights and as he was working on that a big squirrel nest fell out onto the floor Oh, what a mess between the two floors. The squirrels at one time had a lot of fun in this home. But he was able to get all of the holes knocked out and run the wiring so that we could install can lights. So the first can light is going in here and I was so thankful that we were able to put can lights in. I believe we have four in the living room and we put two into the sunroom and now there's no place in this entire side of the home where it's dark and dreary like it was before. And look, they work. First time we flip the switch and that old mad cow in the corner says that we did a good job. Even over in the sunroom that we were working on earlier with the French doors, now we have light. And of course, for that beautiful French door, we were eventually going to have a deck out that door, so we needed exterior lighting as well. I was able to pick up these carriage lights on sale, and of course, I couldn't wait for things to be done. On a snowy day, I asked my husband to please go out and hang up the lights so we could have the lights on outside to see how they would look. And I love the way they turned out. The only thing I need to do still, even to this day as I'm making this video, is I need to paint those doors. And here the drywall is finally going up in the sunroom area. It already looks so much brighter. Do you remember how dark and dingy it looked before? It's really coming together and it's beautiful. And underneath that tarp there is our wood burning stove. And I asked the gentleman who was helping us do this reno, I said, you know, what can I do in that corner? Can I put something in that corner to just kind of brighten up that space? And he said, I don't see why not. And I ran out and I bought a bunch of fake rocks. That's my sister in the picture there. She came over to help me. It didn't take me but two seconds to run out and get into the car and go run and buy all of this faux rock because I wanted a rock feature wall. So she and I put all of the rocks up and I learned a really great technique using some drywall screws to hold them in place while the mortar set. And here you can see it's coming along beautifully here. It's just a random pattern putting together. But do you see those two rocks that slid? That's because the men had to put some up and they didn't listen to me to use the screws and they slid down on top of each other. But there all of the rocks are in and aren't they beautiful? That's gonna be a beautiful wall. The only thing I regret is I didn't put up a mantle. But putting in the grout was easy. I just piped it in with a frosting type bag and then I just smoothed it out with my fingers. I had uh, some gloves on and I would get my fingers wet and I would just smooth the grout in between the rocks. And it turned out really, really beautiful. But you know, I got a little overzealous with my rocks. Here I'm in the process of grouting here, but I had more rocks left over and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with them. That will be coming up in a moment, but here you can see the, the grout is all coming together and isn't it just a beautiful, beautiful wall? I am so proud of myself for coming up with that idea. 
Then I told the men, I've got extra blocks and I want you to do something over in this corner. And so I asked them to frame that corner out and we were gonna put some drywall up on it. There you see, it's just a kitty corner support wall with some drywall. It's open at the bottom. The men thought I was absolutely crazy, but I told them I had a special purpose for this wall. I had all of those extra rocks and I figured, you know, I think I'm going to cover this wall in rocks to match my feature wall across the way and this is where we were going to relocate the television. You can see the bracket there for hanging the TV. I had just enough rocks to make this a feature wall. And matter of fact, I didn't even have enough rocks. You can see where I spaced them out a little bit, but the TV covers that up, so it's okay. You're not going to see that. So we started taping off the room. We're already to that stage. New drywall has gone up. You can see where we've got all of the new plugs put in, and it was time to texture the walls. So we got everything taped off and Papa Jim got out the texture gun. Oops, look, oh, we hung up the TV because I couldn't wait. I wanted to see what it looked like and it fits perfectly. And I had them build the wall specifically for a piece of furniture that would go underneath there. You'll see that in a moment. But we taped everything off and Papa Jim was able to texture everything from one side of the room to the other, from the floorboards up to the ceiling everything has the same beautiful texture. He is so good at texturing the walls. I'm so thankful for that. Here he's got his hopper. If you watched our videos from the renovations that we did upstairs, you'll see that he uh, did the texturing up there as well. And they didn't even have things barely put away before I started ripping out the paint because I just had to see how the paint color was going to look. This is called Toasted Chestnut and this is a color that Papa Jim picked out, but look how beautiful it looks with our white details. This is our French door and a beautiful old farm door that had been turned into an entryway piece. We were finally able to put the furniture into place. We put in a new floor. Do you see the new floor there? And there's that beautiful wood burning fireplace. Oh, we just love that fireplace. It keeps the farmhouse so warm in the winter time, but I love that paint color. Papa Jim did a really good job picking it out. And there's our dog, Jules. She was enjoying the renovation as well. We no longer have Jules, we miss her very much, but she was every bit a part of this living room renovation. And there's a picture of my four boys. Do you recognize that lake in the background? That's the lake from the opening scene in the movie or the show, Bonanza. And here we're just moving some more things in. I started bringing in some of my farmhouse decor even before the guys are done, I'm moving stuff in because I am impatient. I can't help it. And then I was able to get the drapes up. I think these beautiful teal drapes look so great with the white embellishments with the doors, the furniture, the flooring, the paint. Everything looks great. This living room is a complete transformation and I am so pleased with it. Ooh, do you see a sneak peek at the kitchen in the background there reflecting off the window? That will be coming in a video soon. But you know we enjoy this room year round. It's wonderful at Christmas time. We have a beautiful spot to put our Christmas tree. The dogs love it and it's warm and cozy. Thank you so much for joining me for this living room renovation. Be sure to come back. There will be more.